Jason Knight uh, is a co-founder and the chief product officer at OctoML, uh, where he's bringing efficient machine learning to a broader class of developers and hardware. Before that, uh, he was head of product for ML Software and a principal engineer at Intel working on uh, customer deep learning needs. And even before that, he was a computational biologist. Yeah. And uh, today, Jason's going to talk to us about using uh, ML for ML to span the gamut of tiny ML hardware. Thank you, Jason. Great. Thanks, Elfer. So I've got good news and bad news. The good news is the last talk. Uh, bad news is we've got 90 slides to get through. The good news is I've timed it at 17 minutes, so we should fly through. Uh, so we've, we've uh, encountered this problem several times today and in all the conversations I've had. Uh, we've got all this great explosion of, of uh, interesting use cases and such. I'm supposed to smile for the camera, but um, it's hard while talking. Uh, interesting use cases in, in the alphabet soup of models and uh, kernel types, et cetera, and, and how do we support all of these. Uh, when you consider the rapidly evolving software ecosystem that is uh, being built by vendors and, and uh, large players alike, and then the, the uh, explosion, Cambrian explosion of hardware to solve all the needs here and, and try to cater to all these uh, use cases. And then as business applications continue to grow, then more and more cost and latency and, and other requirements are being put on. And, and so this is hard enough on the server class hardware, which is kind of where I come from. But uh, how do we do this on bare metal devices where um, you know, there's just more constraints, less debugging tools, less infrastructure, et cetera? Uh, so let's try to unpack this a little bit and take our approach here. So what I mean by bare metal here is just uh, not running Linux. And so today we're kind of talking about uh, soft IP on FPGA or ARM M-Class or RISC-V MCUs, um, just to kind of set definitions. So let's take this uh, simple uh, example that we're all looking at uh, in so much detail. We want to take an ML model and run it on some uh, embedded device. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, well, oh, there's a GCC compiler uh, on the, for this device. Uh, OK, let me use that. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to write an ML framework from scratch and, or implementation in scratch and see. Uh, I've talked to people in the audience. Uh, probably a lot of you have done this. It's not uh, where we want to be as a field, so uh, let's, let's keep going. Um, so oh, great. Uh, there's ML frameworks that are starting to come out. Uh, uh, TensorFlow Lite Micro, it's a really exciting uh, bit of effort. But uh, you start using that, and uh, you realize, oh, I'm hitting reference kernels here uh, that haven't been optimized for my particular platform or my particular use case. And maybe it doesn't have uh, some of the operators that I care about uh, when you consider um, uh, Hamiltonian embeddings or a uh, very uh, sparse transformer that's the latest rage these days. Uh, so OK, let's, uh, oh, I know, we'll just write some of our kernels ourselves and hand optimize them. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not getting much help from the framework. At least I have somewhere to plug in. But uh, I'm still kind of on my own in terms of writing those, those kernels. And so oops, I'm starting to hit some bugs. Uh, so I got to debug the kernels. And uh, maybe uh, now the next generation of my product switches hardware. And so now I have to uh, kind of go back and optimize kernels and go through this debug loop. And uh, so it's, it's a long road, right? And I think this is where we are as a field. And it's, it's not where we want to be. Uh, and so. Uh, what I'm going to propose today is that MicroTVM, which I'm going to unpack what that is, uh, actually automatically optimizes and generates kernels uh, so that you don't have to debug or write these kernels. And, uh, and it, it, it's, it's early days, but it gives us a potential route to where we want to be in the future for software on TinyML. So the goal here is uh, to minimize the effort to run and optimize ML and bare metal. Simple as that. Uh, so what's the approach? Like, let's dig in. So we have uh, you know, models and frameworks from those uh, t deep learning frameworks uh, we all know and love. And we've got the hardware. Uh, so what do we do to span that uh, gamut in an ideal world? Uh, and so I'm going to show you TVM, if you're not familiar with that, uh, very briefly and, and kind of what it is. Um, so let's dig in. So TVM is composed, uh, it's a deep learning compiler composed of a high-level differentiable IR that fully supports things like dynamic uh, batch sizes and, and control flow that is oftentimes missing in the, the, the kind of older generation of frameworks. And it's fully differentiable, so it kind of opens the door for the future of, of uh, training on the edge uh, once those uh, kernels and stuff get built, um, which I'll describe later. And then there's a tensor expression IR that these get mapped down to. This is a device agnostic way of representing essentially dense, dense linear algebra uh, operators. And then we have a set of backends uh, on the, the bottom. And so this supports pretty much all you know, hardware that you would want to compute on today, including 
uh, server class CPU, GPU, all the way to microcontrollers and FPGAs and mobile processors. And we also have a, um, an academic project called VTA that's a, a, a re essentially a reference implementation of an of a accelerator that you can run on uh, FPGA. And I don't think anyone's taped it out yet, but it, you can do that as well. Um, and so this you know, alone is, uh, well, OK, great, but you said that you know, these high-level operators are somehow still getting mapped down to this uh, you know, tensor expression IR, and then somehow that gets mapped down to LLVM. You know, I, I, sense, I sense something, uh, hand optimization here. Uh, so what, what gives? And so this is uh, the auto TVM. Uh, this is kind of the core of the approach of uh, using machine learning guided search to solve, uh, or at least greatly alleviate the, the need for hand tuning and handwriting these kernels. Uh, so let me talk about what that is. Um, but, but first, uh, just to tell you this isn't snake oil, um, at the TVM conference, the second annual TVM conference uh, past December, uh, AWS, Facebook, Microsoft, and Qualcomm, and, and others, Alibaba, uh, all had you know, great things to say about TVM and how they're using it for Alexa wake-up word models today at, at AWS. Um, Facebook used it for their uh, speech recognition and uh, got an 85x speed up with a bit of elbow grease from sparse colonization, uh, block sparse. Uh, Microsoft has a number of uses in production today, and, and Qualcomm is using TVM uh, for some uh, Hexagon DSP backend work. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out, uh, just search TVM Conference 2019, and you can watch videos and slides about any of those details if you're interested. And so um, this is great. You know, all these people are getting use out of it, and it's, it's solving some problems. But uh, unfortunately, like, you know, the, the state of the art uh, about nine months ago was microcontrollers were kind of out of this loop. Uh, and so the idea here is to introduce this, um, this micro TVM component uh, that, that enables you to run this uh, full loop uh, with uh, microcontrollers that don't have the kind of runtime and Python systems that uh, TVM was uh, depending on. And so I'm going to dive a little bit more into auto TVM, what it's doing. Uh, then we'll dive into micro TVM, what it is and, and what you need to do to support your platform or to use it today, and then uh, how those all connect together. So let's dive in. So you've got some, uh, you've downloaded TVM installed on your machine, and you've got some, some model. Um, uh, TVM will, or, or auto TVM will then uh, invoke TVM to compile your program and, and uh, generate code for a specific hardware backend. It'll then run and measure uh, and do standard deviation analysis, uh, and then result uh, or time that. Uh, take that into consideration and train a cost model that it learns online and then take that to um, improve the, the next program that it compiles and measures, and then uh, the loop continues. And so in a more kind of formal context, uh, you have your computational expression, the, the definition of what operator you're considering. Uh, you have a, a search space that you've defined over uh, the, the ways that you can uh, lower this computational expression to your hardware backend, uh, like blocking factors or cache sizes, et cetera. Uh, and then auto TVM uses TVM itself to do this code generation approach here, and then uh, your back end, and then you're, you're learning your statistical cost model. And there's a couple of different varieties there. And then here at the bottom, you can see kind of performance over number of iterations. Uh, here's QDNN on a server class GPU, and you can see that performance improves over time. When you, and it does even better when you're using a machine learning model versus just a, uh, a black box optimization approach. So that's auto TVM in a nutshell. Uh, check out the NeurIPS 2018 paper if you want to learn more. Uh, so let's look at micro TVM. So there's kind of three parts. I'll talk about two. Uh, kind of how do you use auto TVM? Um, and so the only things you need to use auto TVM are a, an interface to your, your microcontroller that reads and writes device memory and executes, uh, starts code execution on your device and a GCC or, or LLVM uh, backend that can cross-compile to the device. And then you need to download TVM and have Python. Uh, so assuming you have that, then uh, let's look at how you would use this. Uh, so first of all, in, in regular TVM on a you know, NVIDIA GPU or Intel CPU, uh, you'd have some image uh, in Python, and, and you'd uh, maybe build your own model or import it from Onyx or PyTorch or whatever. And then you just use the TVM function, graph runtime build, and you run it and get a, an output. Um, now, let's look at how you would do this in micro TVM context. Uh, it's basically the same thing, but instead of uh, using the graph runtime build, you 
you invoke this micro session and you uh, use open OCD as an example, and you can pass device parameters here, um, and then you build that, and now you have a binary executable that you can then uh, invoke as well. And, uh, and so that's uh, that in a nutshell. So digging a little deep, bit deeper, there's, there's really the device interface I talked about and then the C code generator. Um, and so, you know, if you noticed earlier, we have an LVM backend TVM, so why not just use that? And the answer is basically, um, you know, we'd love to have just used our LVM backend, but the amount of devices that support uh, on the tiny ML side, LVM is, is not what we wanted. So we created a C backend that generates C code from this tensor expression IR uh, in order to use the GCC cross compilation support. And then like I mentioned, uh, the only other piece you need is this uh, read, write, execute uh, capability. And you can do that, most of the time we use JTAG, but you could do it over sockets if you have a network stack or uh, some kind of RTOS. Uh, so it doesn't really matter, it's, it's very flexible. And so that's the runtime. Um, and so this is what it looks like. You, you kind of invoke the communication, inter or set up the communication interface. Uh, the C code generator generates C code that you know, just compiles to an object file. We do our own uh, linker scripts to you map these kernels all into one uh, binary blob that we custom load over, and then we can invoke that um, through the interface. And so now let's talk about you know, how to combine these together. Well, it's, it's basically just uh, you know, kind of taking the micro TVM runtime and using that uh, in the auto TVM loop. Uh, so it's the same pipeline as I just showed on the auto TVM side, but we load kernels into RAM instead of flash to uh, you know, avoid uh, writing out the cycles on our flash uh, and, and be more um, kind of equivalent to what you would expect in a normal deployed application. Um, so now we get to the, some of the evaluation. Um, one kind of caveat is this is all the work of one uh, intern. Uh, so I, I, in a sense, that's uh, one reason to explain why the results aren't as, as fully featured or as good as, as we would like, and we're getting there. But on the other hand, it also shows the power of TVM that all of this was done and created by one intern using TVM as a framework uh, and, and those capabilities. Uh, and so you, ARM published this embed tutorial uh, with a CIFAR 10 evaluation on a Cortex-M7. And so uh, we compared uh, the kernels that you get code generated out of micro TVM, uh, both untuned here uh, on the red and, and tuned on the blue against the Simsys NN uh, kernels in evaluation. Uh, and and this, this tuning process took about five hours on, on I believe, a single Cortex-M7. And uh, we aren't as fast as Simsys NN, uh, but we are currently not using vectorization here in any of the generated code. Uh, so we know we can get faster there, and I have a little bit of teaser results from that coming up. Uh, but the nice part about this is that you're not limited to what Simsys NN support provides you. So if you have crazy kernels, then uh, this kind of gets you in striking distance of the very best out of ARM's uh, performance engineers uh, with a very minimal amount of work because the computer's you're doing most of the work for you. Uh, and then here we take uh, two individual convolution kernels out of that CIFAR 10 and look at them more closely. Uh, here on the left, we actually do, did implement SIMD uh, vectorization uh, emission, and you can see that we get uh, closer to SIMSYS in, but there's still uh, some, some gap there, and we're not quite sure where that comes from, but we're still looking at it. Um, and similar results on the, the second sign. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we've done so far. And uh, coming soon is, is um, this so far only evaluates performance and runs either individual kernels or full models. Obviously, you want to be able to run this on your device. Um, and so here we have kind of two roads. TVM itself already has uh, s several runtimes that we have to choose from and can uh, kind of port those over to microcontrollers and build that out. Uh, we can also generate kernels and kind of hook them into uh, semi-automatically into TensorFlow Lite Micro so that you can use that interface today. And really we're just looking for kind of user or customer feedback on which approach is more interesting to you depending on what features you need. Uh, so these are, these are kind of uh, questions to be determined. Also, TVM has really great support for uh, quantization and ultra low bit quantization. So one of our engineers, uh, Josh, wrote this uh, Riptide paper that uh, he's presenting in a couple of weeks here at MLSys 2020. And um, this is uh, single bit weights uh, with, with kind of a few variations of uh, activation uh, bit widths here. 
And uh, this is not on a tiny ML platform. Uh, this is Raspberry Pi 3. But uh, you can see we're getting on individual kernels like 20x speed ups or so. And uh, overall speed up on SqueezeNet, I believe, it was 10x or something like that. Um, and so because this is all implemented in TVM, uh, it's very easy to kind of cross these paths over. And, and so it's a rich framework for combining these uh, results together. So doing tiny ML on, on ultra low bit quantization then is kind of within easy striking distance. Maybe one more intern. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and another thing coming soon is um, uh, OctoML is, is trying to make this even easier by wrapping this in a service. And, and so we have a, a homegrown cluster of, of uh, ARM Cortex-M devices and ARM A class devices and, and others uh, on, on premises so that you can kind of easily one click, uh, give us a trained model and we optimize and uh, compile and package it for you and hand it back to you uh, so that you know, really trying to make TinyML more applicable and accessible to a broader variety of data scientists and software engineers. And we're currently in private beta, so you know, come talk to me if you're interested. Um, and this is all running on x86 as, as a micro device, uh, kind of if you just malloc a, a block of memory and kind of treat it as, a, as an embedded device, that's for you know, kind of debug, uh, then ARM and RISC-V implementations. Uh, we're putting out an in-depth write-up in uh, early March uh, with uh, an upstream TV MPR and, and documentation and uh, scripts that you can uh, evaluate yourself. All this is going open source uh, upstream as well. Uh, also, you know, I, I compared against CMSIS and in, um, which is kind of interesting because uh, in some sense that's the, the worst comparison to make because like, you already have the kernel. Like, why do you need to re-implement that? Uh, and we don't, actually. We could just leverage that because TVM has the capability of, of actually evaluating kind of what is the performance for each kernel and then also choosing a few different fusion uh, options and then just saying, oh, maybe I'll just use the Simpsons and N kernel uh, here and then I'll code gen for these where Simpsons and N is, isn't as performant. Uh, and so really it, it's not an either or thing. Um, like you can choose uh, individually and then have your, your model execution be an amalgam of, of both of these depending on where it makes sense, depending on your application your specific model and your specific hardware. Uh, and then, yeah, the SMD vectorization support, like I mentioned. Uh, so that's it. Uh, here's the, the one intern on the left here. Uh, and then Josh did the quantization work, Riptide. So check him out at MLSYS in Austin if you're going to be there. And uh, yeah, reach out uh, if you have questions or comments, suggestions, anything. Uh, thanks so much.